Okay, all right, Stephen, first of all, um, just who, who are you? Just tell us a bit about yourself, what you do now, what your trading history is, how you found yourself to be in the hot seat. Okay, um, well, I, I work now as a coach working with traders uh, inside uh, banks and hedge funds. Um, I do a little bit of work with private traders as well, but it's, it's mostly um, experienced traders, anywhere from 10 to 20 years experience. Um, they, they come from a variety of markets, so it can be any market, it can be um, foreign exchange, fixed income, income credit, equities. Um, I really work on the performance aspects, the behaviour aspects of their work, um, and it's, it's trying to get them to improve their performance, to, to perform at a higher level. Um, the sort of companies I work with, we're talking about large investment banks, Credit Suisse, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Societe Generale, uh, Swedbank, NAB, um, and, and some very large hedge funds, but unfortunately we're not allowed to. <laughs> Confidentiality uh, keeps us from naming those. Um, I came from this after a 25 year career in trading, uh, working for a number of banks, um, and uh, started in 1986. So I, I worked in foreign exchange, again worked in fixed income rates, um, I was a market maker, I was a property trader, so I've, I've got a lot of experience in those areas. Why, why did you, why, why, did, why was the market a calling for you? Um, well I always had an interest in the psychology side of trading, the behavioural side of trading. Um, I, I, I was fascinated by it and I've read books for years and years on it um, and um, I found myself probably working I thought in the later years, almost in a laboratory, a psychological laboratory, uh, surrounded by traders with all their emotions and screaming and shouting and different behaviours. Um, and I loved it. And uh, in 2009, I had, um, I had a chance to think about what my new direction is. Do I want to carry on in trading? Do I want to do something different? Um, 25 years is a long time in this job. And it was put to me that uh, I should consider, would I consider going doing coaching. I, I had coaching back in 2001 from an executive coach and he suggested that I would be, I would be ideal for this sort, of, this sort of job and that's the direction I went. So. What, what do you think is the, what was the most learning that you think you took out from your early trading experiences? Um, I, I would say learning from mistakes. That was, I, I think that's what taught me more than anything in the early days. We all make mistakes. Um, trading finds your weaknesses every single day. Um, the most important thing is to learn from that, to take on board what's happening, to, to sort of be humble and open to what you're doing and that you can do it in different ways. And I think that was, that was what I got out of it. So, but you're, you're also, I mean, you're in a slightly unusual space because you, you don't specialise in only trading psychology, but you also analyse and actively trade. Can you talk about that? Yeah, well, I, th I suppose since I left the market, as I say, in 2009, I, I kept my hand in with trading. In fact, I found it very hard to stop. I think once uh, there's um, the uh, once you become a trader, it's very hard to actually give up. You always get drawn back to it. So I, I decided to do it as a hobby, to do it as something that um, that I keep my hand in. Um, I watch markets, I watch the foreign exchange markets, I watch the equity indices, I watch the fixed income markets. Um, I'm very selective because I don't have to make a particular budget any year now. I've set a certain amount of capital aside just to trade with. I could put longer term trades on. I, I don't do the, the short term trading which I used to do more actively simply because I couldn't be sitting in a coaching session with someone and my mind's on you know, how much the Bund has moved over the last five minutes. So I, I take longer term trades now and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's gone pretty well. It's, it's ironic how um, without the pressure to actually perform, sometimes you perform better. So it's... Uh, but, free, free your mind. Yeah, yeah, very much so, very much so. But also it's, I have that ability now to step back and take a distance and put a distance between what I do and when I do it. Um, so I don't have to be in the market. I can look at the market far more objectively, and I think that aids my my, my trading and risk processes. Well, well, just talk a bit about your time as a trader in the exchange rates and fixed income markets for some of the world's best banks. Just, are there any you know any good memories from those times? Oh yeah, some fantastic memories. Um, 
I, I tended to do, especially in the early years, I tended to do really well in bear markets. Um, I would call myself a bear market trader for many years. So, which has an element of being contrarian about it. Um, but I, I tended to find that I worked best when markets were at extremes. I was looking for some sort of breakdown. Um, and you could get some huge moves doing that. The trouble is that if you get into a very long bull market, those moves come along quite regularly. Um, and I think later in my career, I learned to trade both sides of it far more evenly, to be both bullish and bearish. Um, my own particular style was to look for um, high risk reward trades. Now, every, everyone's always talking about looking for high risk reward trades. Um, but I think I fitted a style to my personality that matched. I wasn't the sort of trader who could just run with a big position um, for a long period over, over many weeks and months. Um, I would get a little bit bored, I would get, I would get frustrated. Um, and I would usually, if I took longer term views, I wasn't performing at my best. I performed far better when I could find a large move in a short space of time. Um, and um, that, that worked for my personality, which, which is a good learning, I think, for all traders, because I think you have to fit how you trade to your personality. And, and at the moment, we're doing a lot of work around trader personalities and matching trader personalities to their work styles. And this is actually quite a bit of the, per, of the coaching we do. So do you believe anyone can make a living out of trading then? I think anyone has a capability. Very few people can. I think just about everyone has a capability. Certain personalities are more likely to be successful at it than others. In the same sense that I, I like to use a lot of sports analogies and I, I consider trading very much like sport. It's a performance based activity. Um, and there's horses for courses. And it's the same with trading.